Hey guys, welcome to Architect. My name is Tanner, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to choose a computer for architecture school. Um, I don't know about you, but for me it was really exciting uh, and stressful trying to figure out what computer to get for school. There's so many different things, there's so many different uh, variations and brands of computer that can get a little overwhelming and be hard to decide what's going what's to be best for you, for the programs you're going to be using, so on and so forth. Uh, so we're just going to go over from start to finish, from beginning to end, of how to pick a computer that's going to suit you and your needs for school. When deciding what kind of computer you want to get, you need to decide whether you want to get a desktop or a laptop. A desktop is going to have a lot more bang for its buck. A laptop, what's nice about that, it's going to be more mobile and you can bring it places to get bigger, more amounts of RAM, faster CPU and GPU, things like that. In a laptop, it's just going to be more expensive. It's doable, but it's going to be more expensive. And typically a laptop will never be as fast as a uh, desktop or have the ability to be as fast as some of the fastest desktops. So you'll need to decide which one of those is going to work best for you. As a student, obviously a laptop is going to be the easiest to go. Uh, you can bring it with you everywhere you go. But you can do a desktop as well. You could do a desktop and buy a less expensive computer that can still handle the programs. Uh, you just need to see which one would be more suitable to your needs and uh, how you're going to be using it. Because I've personally seen uh, classmates of mine get a faster um, desktop computer for at their dorm or apartment or home or wherever it may be and that faster desktop actually costs less than what equivalent speed uh, laptop would have cost so maybe they're saving a thousand twelve hundred dollars they then took that money and spent it on a laptop that was fast enough to do the programs when they're on the go and then when they need the really fast and really heavy duty portion of it whether it be to render um, a scene or walk around of a building, they would do that through their desktop. So a lot of different options, neither better or worse than the other, just whatever will work best for you. Some of those programs would be SketchUp, Revit, Rhinoceros 3D, um, AutoCAD. I'm gonna kind of explain a little bit what I found uh, that helped me out with making a decision of what I needed for my computer, what specs. Um, I'm just gonna kind of break it down. By no means am I an expert, on these I'm not a you know I'm not a computer specialist so I may not technically say exactly how it is but I will give you the best of my knowledge to help you make a decision and have an understanding of what they mean and their importance to you as an architecture student and the computer that you'd be getting so the first thing I want to talk about is the RAM um, RAM comes in many different size options so you have 8 gigabytes 16 gigabytes 32 64 um, can get larger uh, depending on a desktop or how large of a laptop you have. Think of RAM as your laptop's or your computer's ability to multitask and uh, do multiple functions at once. So the more RAM you have, the faster your computer will be at handling multi multiple programs or larger programs that require more RAM. Some programs just use up more RAM than others. With the more RAM you have, the smoother your computer will be. Because oftentimes in architecture, you're having to use more than one program at once, and that can really slow down a computer if you don't have enough RAM. For me, I wouldn't do any lower than 32 because it's kind of future-proofing it, so as your laptop gets older and maybe starts slowing down, you still have that space, you still have a f more amounts of RAM to keep it going a little bit longer and keep your computer, um, have it last longer for your needs than having to update to a new computer down the road sooner. Um, 16 gigabytes would be the minimum, 32 or higher would be recommended. So moving on to storage capacity, uh, many different sizes you can get, uh, and there's a couple different types. Typically with the kind of computers you're gonna be getting, they're gonna come with what's called a SSD or a solid state drive. Those don't have any moving parts, so they're a lot more reliable. With these programs, to download them onto your computer, they take up a decent amount of space, your SSD. So you're gonna want a good amount of space to be able to put those files onto your computer, but then also save files as well. The minimum that our school recommended was 512 gigabytes. Um, in my opinion, that's not enough. Uh, it'd be used up pretty fast unless you're using some flash storage or cloud storage, um, which is free to you as a student through Google, um, Google Drive, which is really handy. But 512 definitely at the very minimum, but I would recommend a terabyte or, or more. It'll save you a lot of headache in the future of not having to move files around, keep deleting files. Um, 
I'd say one terabyte or more that I would recommend. No lower than 512 though. Next thing I'm going to talk about is your computer's CPU. And this is where I'm, again, not an expert, but I'll explain to you the best that I can. Um, the CPU is arguably the most important part of your computer and your computer choice. Essentially the CPU is the brains of the computer. It will allocate different tasks to different parts of the computer that can handle those tasks the best. Typically you're going to have an Intel CPU, you'll have Intel i5s, i7s, i9s, um, the higher those numbers, 5, 7, 9, uh, the faster those CPUs are. The faster your CPU, the faster your computer will run. Um, and just the smoother it will be. Now things are going into i9, they're a little bit more common now in the laptops and computers. Those will be faster, um, and there's different cores. The more cores, again, the faster your computer will run. So if you're wanting a faster computer, higher cores, higher number, your computer will be faster. Um, i7s, i7 six core, just fine. I wouldn't go any lower than that. So now for the most confusing and probably integral part to your computer um, purchasing decision. Um, this is the GPU or the graphics card. Um, every laptop that you should be looking at, not every laptop in general, um, every laptop comes with an integrated graphics card or GPU. Um, one that's built in, usually those ones are slower. Those ones can't handle very much, but you have to have it. The laptops you're going to be looking at will have an integrated GPU and then a dedicated GPU. So the dedicated GPU will come in when it's a more intensive program that really needs to use some good graphics. Your integrated GPU will be used for just your daily tasks. In the architecture side of things, you're gonna have programs like it's Enscape and Lumion that are rendering softwares that need a lot of detailing. They're gonna make a building that you've designed look realistic. And to do that, they have to use a fast GPU. The faster your GPU, the faster your rendering will go, which will in turn save you time when working on a project. So there are different kinds of GPUs and different brands. On the Windows side of computers, you're going to find mostly NVIDIA graphics cards. And you'll see GTX 2080s, GTX 2070s, and 2060s. Sometimes you'll see 1080s, 1070s, things like that. That's NVIDIA's graphics cards. And those ones pretty much work with all the programs you'll be looking at. So the faster or larger number of graphics card you have through NVIDIA, the faster your rendering time will be. So if you're doing a video, a walk around of a building you have, it might take one graphics card eight minutes to do that video, and the other graphics card one minute to do that video. So you can see how there's importance to having a faster GPU to move through your projects quicker. So when it comes to making a decision on a graphics card, there's so many different ones out there. Don't get overwhelmed by this. Just know that the bigger the number, the faster it'll be. Um, so if you're looking at like the fastest one as of right now, what's out there for the laptops that are more common, you'd be looking at like a GTX 2080. So on the Mac side of things, and yes, you can use a Mac for architecture school. I know a lot of people suggest not to, and it's hard to find information out there on it, but it is doable, it can be done, um, and I'll have a different video on that down the road. Now that we're done with the confusing spec side of things, um, obviously off screen size, they have 17 inch, 16 inch, 15 inch. Um, you won't want to go any smaller than a 15, 15.6 inch screen, um, but that's really just preference. The biggest decision, is choosing uh, what brand you want to get. So what I mean by that is PC or Apple. And I know if you are a Windows person and a PC person, such an easy decision for you. Hands down, you're thinking, I'm just gonna do PC, which would be a good idea. All the programs that are out there right now, all the main ones that are used, are native to Windows. A lot of them don't work natively on an Apple computer. If you are an Apple person, and you are thinking that you have to buy a Windows laptop or computer and you're not wanting to and you're really wanting to get an Apple, you can. You just have to be specific on the kind that you get. It's definitely doable. I personally have an Apple computer and it works great. It just depends on your preference. My recommendation is Windows computer is going to be the best choice for a person to get. Uh, they're typically less expensive or more, more computer. You'll get more RAM, a faster GPU, 
maybe CPU, um, more storage for cheaper. If you're on a budget and you want to get as much bang for your buck, Windows is the way to go. It's going to be easy. Everything works on it. On the Apple side, if you really want to get an Apple, you can do that. You can definitely do that, but you have to be specific with it. That one, there's not many options. There's not all these different uh, specs to put in with it. It's basically, you got to get the best. I'm going to end up making another video for um, you Apple viewers out there on how to choose an Apple laptop. My recommendation in this video for a computer to choose for architecture school would be a Windows. It's going to be cheaper, it's going to be typically faster, and all the programs will run natively on it. So many students want to buy a computer right away and a laptop right away because they're in college. My advice is don't do it. Do not go buy an expensive laptop right away because you're going to have to buy a laptop again once you get accepted into an architecture program. If you have an older laptop, use that. If you have something like this is a 2012 MacBook Pro, use something like this. It'll get the job done for year one until you find out if you're in the program or not. If you're not in the program, get the computer you want to get. So use either an old computer that you have or that your family has. If you really want to get something, you could go a Chromebook. I mean, they're inexpensive. I think I paid $200 for this and it works just fine. It's a touch screen, opens up, it's all touch screen. I can fold it in and have it be a tablet. It was, it's just a handy computer um, and they're inexpensive and they definitely can do what you need them to do. Or you can always get a tablet. So here, this is an older iPad Pro. You have a touch screen, Apple Pencil. You can write your notes on it. You can get attachments for keyboards on it. They're cheaper than a laptop more expensive than a Chromebook. So you can kind of just choose which one would work best for you. But I don't recommend to get a computer until you find out if you're in the program. I appreciate you guys watching. Please click the subscribe button below so you can find out about the next videos that are coming up and when they're released. Otherwise, until next time.